Hi, hey, it's the Graham. It's me, T. From the Pattersons, taking the trains to Tibet. Okay, this is a, a Thursday, which means it's audio drama day. You know, audio, audio drama. Is this audio, modern audio drama, audio drama. So this is Cape Codes. Cape Codes thing I started in South Africa, in the Western Cape. We're in the Eastern Cape now, but it's Cape Code. So there's a Northern Cape. So don't worry about it. <laughs> talk about audio drama. That's the important part. On Thursdays we talk about audio drama. On Mondays we talk about me. On uh, Tuesdays we talk about uh, U.S. politics. On Wednesdays we talk about world politics. Thursdays, audio drama. Fridays is like a wrap up. You know, some weekend read or some, something like that. On Saturdays and Sundays, I do whatever I whatever, whatever comes to my little brain here. But here, this is a special uh, audio drama day. Why? Let me move this down just a little bit. It's a special audio drama day only. Uh, because I'm going to give you the true history of um, how I developed an audio drama or a modern audio drama, as I say. Okay, as you know, ra ra audio drama comes from radio drama. Radio drama, or radio started about like, well, about a hundred years ago. There you go. So young, it's a young art. It's young, 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 whatever it is. You know, that, that of course comes out of theater, which comes out of uh, storytelling and the whole thing. It's orature, you know, like, like that. Oh, shout out to David Orature. Anyway, anyway, the point is. Uh, it's a young art as far as uh, uh, a radio drama and, 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 and modern audio drama. Different, only diff there is no difference between modern audio drama and radio drama. Well, here is the difference. The difference is that uh, an audio drama is uh, is not just radio; it's everything audio, right? And when people ask me about uh, uh, audio drama, I say it's it's theater for the microphone. That's what I tell them, right? Uh, but it has a lot of other components. You know, that, well, there's a uh, there's of course the got to have live sound effects. So sound effects, and uh, there's other things that I put in there. But I want to give you a, a history of how I uh, developed in audio drama, okay? And I got, I, I found, <laughs> uh, I just got the computer, oh, this computer's been down for like, I don't know, two, three years, right? So I just got it up. And then I used to, every time I wrote a play, I don't, well, let me go back. When I was, ah, boy, now I got to start from this part. Let me put this, when I, when, when, I, when I was writing plays, Every time I finished a play, I, I wrote a, a, I wrote a CV, you know, uh, that included the, the play, the last play, and I kept on going like that. So there's a there's a bunch of them around. Some places don't know where they are. But an audio drama, uh, uh, be, uh, I uh, officially, I won't say officially, but my my uh, let's say my my laboratory for audio drama was really uh, WBAI radio from about 1990. Two roughly, I was at BAI to 1996 when I officially, then I, I officially stopped uh, being officially at WBAI. No, that's not true. I, I can't say officially, officially. Uh, I, I, I basically, uh, in 1996, I ended uh, uh, my tenure as arts director. I'll show you. Anyway, when that happened, then I, I basically left radio. I left New York. I started traveling worldwide. Let's put that on. Travel, travel around and took audio drama other, other places. So anyway, uh, I, 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 found, I found this resume. I found the resume that I wrote when I was in Delray Beach, Florida. Right? And um, so it says, oh, well, that, you can't see it. Well, it doesn't matter. It's backwards for you. Anyway, it's, uh, um, I was at uh, 3900 Place Valencia. V-A-L-E-N-C-A-Y. I don't know. Delray Beach, Florida. Um, uh, three three four four five. Anyway, so this 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 resume uh, basically ends in ninety six, right? So I'm going to take all the way from the beginning of the resume. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be. Oh, it's my whole resume. What, what is this? Oh yeah, Penascope Middle School Fraternity uh, has my affiliations. Uh, Penascope Middle School Fraternity was one of them. Oh, Black Rock Coalition. Oh, I forgot about that. Hey, you know when Black Rock Coalition first started? Hey, Vic Smooth joined it. Vic, 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 Vic Smooth. Number one, that is. Um, it's a fun fact. <laughs> when Black Rock Coalition first started as a, you know, Black Rock Coalition. You know, um, I was like their first something, I think treasurer or something like that. Because I was, I was Austria. It's a long story. Anyway, that's when Michelle De 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 Cello was was there, you know. Like, in fact, they did a whole uh, a benefit for WBI, a Black Rock Coalition Orchestra. She was in. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyway, so there, uh, Sound Gathers is an organization I helped start. Uh, uh, Melvin Melvin Simmons, the great Melvin Simmons, 
my man, my main man, and uh, we're we're sound guys, we're archivists. So, so it goes to show you. Oh, by the way, we're we're right now in uh, we're in Dumbaza. So if you hear chickens, cows, goats, you know, children, just know we're, I'm in a location. It's in Southern Africa. Okay. So um, well, sound gathers. And so, 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 so Melvin and I did because it's a whole. Anyway, we, we recorded a lot of uh, uh, forums and uh, political things for WBA. This started about 1982, 1983, somewhere around there. We started formally doing sound gathers. Uh, um, uh, like uh, Samori Marks, we have forums, you know, we, we record him. Um, of course, the Great Alambre Breath, uh, doing the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, like that. And in fact, I, at one particular point for his Africa Kaleidoscope, I was his engineer for his program, blah, blah. Anyway, you know, I'm just saying that's my long affiliation. But the sound gathering is where we got a lot of. Hey, that's when I first met. Uh, first met only time. <laughs> recorded Thomas Sankara when he was in New York. So I shook Thomas Sankara's hand. Hey. Um, a lot of things like oh, now you have this Israeli Gaza whatever whatever doing that. You know what? That was before then though. I look. I, I shook a lot of generals' hands. Even Moshe Dayan, you know, the guy with the patch. I met that boy. Shook his hand back in the way back in the day. That was in the seventies. That's when I was, I was hanging out. And don't worry about that part. Anyway, the point is, I know a lot of I knows. I knows a lot. I knew. I, I've come across a lot of energies. Let's put it on the planet. Let me keep on going because it's gonna. This is gonna be longer than I want. But I'm sorry. I get. I get. I get distracted. Uh, uh, what else? The sound gathers. Oh, uh, World Association of Community Broadcasters. Oh yes, of course. That's the world. Like community broadcast. I've been doing community radio specifically, even when I graduated, undergraduate degree, and everybody thought that I was going to go to, uh, you know, NBC, CBS, ABC, because that's the day of the puppies. You don't know about the puppies. Puppies, just, just clean cut, clean cut uh, black people that, that, that they look like we were going to ascend to the, you know, whatever. Have, oh, they did, you know. I was lucky because I had a guy that was the same profile as me, same skin color, and all this stuff, saying we graduated at the same time, blah, blah, blah. He went that route, ended up dumping it. I went the other route. I went community radio, and I knew from the beginning. Uh, mainly because, well, I'll tell you mainly because. Um, well, I'm get to that. Well, I get to that. well, mainly because. Well, oh, I don't have it on there. I don't have. Uh, do I have? I just have anything like this. Oh, I don't. Oh, this. Oh, this is my. Oh, this is my list for uh, audio drama. But I started in radio in uh, WPRB radio, the Princeton radio station, the broadcast station of Princeton, uh, for the. Uh, Saturday or so with JB. I was poet resident. So, anyway, so I started basically in community radio specifically in 1972. Okay, so uh, so but uh, but I knew back then. I mean, you know, I knew about radio and I, and I had my I, I started doing skills, getting skills, and I just knew about communications. I know that the communications uh, when they, when I was graduating in in what in 70, 76, something was seventy yeah seventy six uh, B A Urban Communications. English literature, Liverpool College, Rutgers University. When I was graduating, right, well, you know, aren't you going to go to those big days? I said, no, 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 I'm not. To tell you the truth, I was trying to get back to theater, but we won't get into that right now. The point is, I knew that. Uh, in fact, my line to them was that: look, at some point, I would have to, um, you know, I would have to, uh, you know, get get rid of their mediocrity, or they would have to get rid of me. And so, <laughs> why, why even go? It's waste my time and energy dealing with them, right? So I, I purposely only did, I did community radio when I started really getting seriously doing radio in '82. I started doing community radio, and I never really wanted to go to. And don't get me wrong, like uh, when I was uh, my internship was a regular a big time radio station. I have a, I had an internship in, in newspapers. I that was a, in, in Trenton, Trenton, whatever Trenton Times, whatever that not Trenton, whatever it was in Trenton. That internship with them. So I'm all I'm, I'm, I'm how you say I'm uh, I have uh, I'm qualified in all areas of, of media. Believe me, I, I don't want to get into that. Let me let me. I want to get to audio drama right now. Okay, and so uh, education. Da da da. Oh, Mason Grove School of Arts. Oh, I'm so I'm trained in. Uh, I did two and a half years of uh, graduate study in uh, playwriting, right? I didn't take the degree. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's taught so many things. But that was the best thing because I wouldn't have done audio drama if I would have had a degree because I've been teaching some, you know, some kids how to how to be playwrights or whatever. Don't get it. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. So now, according to this resume that I dug up, that I found, my first, the first 
audio drama that I, oh, and all these, uh, all these audio dramas, I produced them all. I produced them all, and had other roles. Most of the time I had other roles in them, you know what I mean? So let me just tell you what the first one was. In 19, oh, what was, what was this? Oh, 1986, officially. That's when, okay, uh, Night Racism Ended. It's an original, it was an original script, and it was by the Creative Unity Collective, right? I produced it and I engineered it. Okay, now this is important for you to understand. Remember I said Creative Unity Collective. There was a group called Creative Unity. Now this is 86, right? From 1980 to 1988, yeah, about eight years, I was artist model for the School of Visual Arts. Uh, I was quite good. I mean, not really good. I was so good that after 84, the, 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 the guy that hands out the modeling job, he said, no, you're not modeling anymore. <laughs> he said to me, he said, I became his assistant to do all, he did a lot of paperwork and stuff like that. And the only time I would go, I would like the emergency model, standby model, something like that. That was my title, but I was really his assistant. We, and then we had another, we had a female a, a, a standby model, but she wouldn't do no, she didn't do any work for him. And I was so good that people knew my reputation at the School of Visual Arts was so good, it was such that uh, if, if if I had to come to, to substitute or to do something, it means that there was a problem, either with the teacher or with the students. When I came, the problem stopped. Cold-blooded. Just, just stopped. It's some weird, don't worry about that part. Okay. Anyway, so in that, in that time period, I met uh, a great group called Creative Unity. They were artists and stuff like that. There was about eight of them at the time. They all, all, for all, con all kinds of arts. And they, and they uh, put on a show one time, and uh, I was doing, a, well, I, I just always did poetry. And I, I, and I asked him, well, can I do a poem in, in your show? Sure. I want to do this poem. Uh, I think it's called Night Rain by uh, County Color. One of my favorite poems. Well, I know it's called Night Rain by County Color. I love me some count, County Color. Well, we won't get into County Color right now. But the point is, uh, so I did that I did that thing. And they, no, so we, we sort of bonded. You know, they did a program. I did a poem in the program. Da, da, da. And then I saw what they were doing. They were doing some fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, these mostly black black people, and there, there was one, there was one, one white girl, Kara, one white girl in the group, but, uh, you know, it was mainly black, black, young black artists, you know, all kinds of uh, media or, or draw, whatever, you know, film, all kinds of art, because um, the School of Visual Arts, and so, um, uh, and, and I said, well, you know, and by that time I was at BAI, this is 1980, so I was at BAI since 82, and I got, and I, I got a lot of skills, I, I developed a lot of skills, let's put it that way. And I said, I said, you know, y'all should come to the radio station, you know, because you, what you're doing, because they would do um, skits, they would play like, they would be playing like Ronald Reagan and, 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 and Ed Koch, you know, all kinds of, you know, white people. I said, now this is cool what you're doing, but if, the, if you put this on stage, people, they're not going to really accept you, you young black cats, even though you got the, the, all, you got the chops playing all these, you know, these white people. I said, which is all right, no, you could do that, you put on masks, whatever you do, like that. But if you did it on radio, hey, it'd be good. They sort of thought about that. And then I got in a position where uh, BAI had a, a folio, uh, uh, you know, uh, like a program guy, you know. And I said, and I got to where, because they needed somebody. And so I got to where they could, as a group, produce the, 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 the program guy and get, uh, get, a, little, get a little money. That was back in the 80s, right? And, uh, and in exchange, I would teach them how to do radio. And, and, and perhaps we get the radio program. So that's what happened. Anyway, so this was the first one, 86, even though I was with them before 86. I guess I had been training for a few months before that. Maybe, this is the end of 86, probably. So say, say somewhere in 86, that's when I started uh, training them in radio. I came to the station, they started putting out the folio and stuff like that. Okay. So that's the first thing that they did on radio, and that was a special yeah I think that was a special or maybe they or no I'm sorry I, I got they got a radio program they got a radio program before I got a radio program how is that possible it happened anyway so they got a radio program and they this was one of the I think it was one of the first maybe this was before they got the, somewhere in there that they got their radio program then the next did this 1986 then I go up here the next you did the very beginning of next year 1987 so I think oh yeah the night racism ended I think that was right in the winter of 86. But then in the spring, Retina does the, yeah, still, in, well, the winter of 86, the, the beginning of 1987, 
Um, there's a thing called uh, 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 day of absence. What happened was there was a, a usually there was some sort of altercation, killing, whatever have you. And uh, who's the boy? Who's, who's the fat boy with the raise? Well, he's not fat anymore. You know, the the, the, the agent uh, with, with, with uh, um, Al Sharpton. Sorry, <laughs> I should know because I used to record him too. Uh, Al Sharpton called for a day of absence because he was an activist and there was going to be a day of absence. Now. I'm going to go back and say that I was at, oh, I mean, now I'm giving my back to the theater. How, how? Anyway, I have been in, in theater since 1967. I've been doing community radio since 1972, but since 67 I started in theater at Negro Ensemble Company. And one of the founders of Negro Ensemble Company is Douglas Turner Douglas Turner Ward, Bobby Hooks, and uh, Gerald Crone, which are three people that started Negro Ensemble Company. Uh, Gerald Crone was like the... the the, 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 the finance guy, the, the white guy, you know, like that. For those of you at BAI, there's a guy, don't worry. Anyway, he, he had an office, don't worry about it. And so, but Negro Ensemble Company, um, basically, uh, a Douglas Turner Ward and uh, Bobby Hook started it. And then it was just, it's, it's a whole phenomenon they started. Black theater, blah, 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 blah. So Douglas Turner Ward, one of the things he did, he was, he was also an actor, good actor, but he was a, a playwright, right? And he wrote a play called Day of Absence. It's a one act play. Then, then there was another, anyway, uh, him and Bobby, they had gotten to him because there was a, a thing, I think, uh, with the Sartre, so one of those people like that, that, that group, that Sartre group, whatever, they did a, a thing called the Blacks, you know, it was a play, and, and, and uh, a lot of people, uh, 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 Norman Bush, a bunch of people were in that, a bunch of noted black actors were in that, that piece, and out of that came the Negro Ensemble Company. Actually, Bob, uh, you know, Bob Rantier was a part of that whole scene, too, just everybody, well, everybody knew each other, but uh, so they started the Negro Ensemble Company out of that, and they had a resident company, whatever. I became part of the, the, the intermediate acting class, whatever. So I knew about Douglas Turner Ward, and I knew about the play, right? So when when uh, when uh, the shop guy uh, uh, called for Dave Absence, I'm at the radio station. I said, "Hey, but people don't know what Dave Absence is," and I knew about Doug's play, so I would go like, "Let's do the play." Yay! So as an audio drama, so what I did was, uh, where's it at? Oh, so at the, at the beginning when they called for that thing to, 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 come on in, you can come through, come on through. I'm here recording on my thing and they, and they, they got some stuff to go. Ahead, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. I'm just recording. Go ahead. Um, well, I'm in the community house. I'm in the, um, the hotel house so we, you know, people come do stuff. Um, so, um, so they don't know what that is. So let me do the play on the radio. So this was the middle of the day. Now remember, this is the first. Now we did the night racism ended. Uh, we had night racism end like a, a few weeks before, maybe less than a month before. But it was at night. Nobody, nobody's paying attention. So when I said I wanted to do this piece, right, and it, it's, it's this one act play. So I wanted to do it in the daytime. So we, I, I procured, I think, an hour in the middle of the day, right? This is the middle. It's like. Maybe we did it at 11 o'clock in the morning. So like whenever we did, it was in the middle of the day. It wasn't late afternoon. And so, but what I did, which was different, remember, I come with theater background. It's the first piece I'm actually doing at the, well, this, this is a piece that I'm doing. I think we, no, we had, I hadn't done any, you know, I hadn't done any audio dramas really. I may, I've done any audio dramas. I do, at the station, yeah. But what I did, I took the whole entire back end. This, this was at 505 8th Avenue where you had, it's like where we had this thing called uh, uh, Edit B, a student, Edit B was a, a, an engineering room. You had the main control room, which they, back then called Master Control, and MC Master Control Room, because that's the way, that's the way it is, but I always call it the main control room. Not because I'm politically correct, but to me, that was more accurate. <laughs> so, you had the main control room, then you had a, 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 a Studio A, I guess it was, and then Studio A, a big room that had a, a little baby grand piano in it, and then then uh, then you had the uh, Edit B, which 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 uh, which which so you could you could do stuff in 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 in, the, in Studio A and, and attach Edit B, but but they were, but I mean, but you can link the uh, main control room and and Edit B together. You can link them together, uh, so you can do that. Then there was a Edit called Edit C at the time, which had a thing called a meat locker in it. Then you had um, you had another, you had an office over there. Oh, that was the, the office was the um, program director's office. And then you had 
the uh, you had the uh, thing right there. Then you had uh, 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 there, there's, like I said, um, edit C, uh, and I think it was Studio B, like that, which was the meat locker. Then you had the engineering uh, office. Then you had the, the there's, there's a room uh, that had all the, the telephone, tr not like you know all electronics go through the room, a, a small like closet thing. Then you had the uh, all right now. Then we had the um, uh, then you had the arts the arts department. You know, uh, our office for the arts department, which I was part of arts department. Yeah, at that time, even that time, I was part of arts department. And then, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, you had the, no, wait, 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 no, 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 not the arts department. You know, you had, uh, I said the news, no, you had the newsroom, right? Then you had down the hall, where was public affairs? Oh, where the heck was public affairs? I think, oh, then there was a, another one, offices down there. But this, this, this area right here, so what I did, coming from a theater background, I said, audio drama, I will treat the microphone, like say for instance, you're, you're, you're uh, how do you say, you're watching a play, you sit in the audience watch a play, you have the set there, right? Then you have, the, the play takes place in this, this the, the, the living room, you, know, you, see, you see the whole house, you have the living room there, the kitchen area right there, you have the backyard area there, upstairs you might have some bedroom, and so when you want to go to those scenes, you just light it up with lights, you know, because you have the stage right there, so no, you know, you just light it up. So if the scene going to be in the backyard or something like that, they just light that up and the scene have the backyard. Then it goes down. So you want to do the, the kitchen where the light scene lights up there. See, see how that go? Like that. Okay. So in my brain, I'm going like, well, I'll use each one of these places as if it was on stage. But what's, instead of, because it's audio, instead of having the lights come up, have the microphone come up in that room. So I staged the entire um, thing of, of uh, uh, Day of Absence that took place in this town, in these places. So, the one stood being like the mayor's office, then at the time there would be some outside, the porch, out there, we had, we had that little room that I was talking about, I used it as a telephone exchange room, because they had those old, the, the, the play took place in the, in, the, in the 50s, I guess. And so, it, it had one of those things, where, just like when I was, uh, when we took over Barnes Community College, you had those, those switchboards that, that you had to plug in, you know, and you plug it in, and you do, 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 do like that, right? Okay, so, so what I did was, uh, that's what I did. So in different areas, I had, I, when, 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 the, when the scene came up, I would just put, I, was in, I, I controlled everything from A to B. So, uh, so I would just pull the, that thing up and the scene would take place there, like that. If we was in a meat locker, I'd just call them up and say, hey, we're coming to you, okay, pay attention. And plus the whole uh, station was monitored, you know, so we had the monitors down a little bit so you wouldn't get any feedback. And so that's what happened. So that's how we did the play. It was fat. It was confusing people because they didn't. Have, they, they, the station never had anything like that happen before. You know, I had to put signs up there, quiet. We're recording, blah, blah, blah. and people coming through, sort of getting suspicious what's going on, like right that. But we we got it done. Like I said, it was the middle of the day, so so we got it done. It was fantastic. I think Michael Mayberry. He must he must have a copy someplace. This was this. It's interesting because I think the first things that you do usually is almost like the best. Don't get me wrong, I had some great audio dramas after that, but as far as the sheer, everything that happened, the, the, the rhythm, the timing, whatever it is, was like amazing. It's an amazing piece, right? And here's the other thing I like about audio drama. I don't repeat myself, even in plays. I won't, I won't revise something. I won't, no. You got to do something else. You got to create something else. I just, I'm just not in my head. I'm going like, ah, did that, done that, don't need to do it again. <laughs> that's, my, that's my philosophy, right? Okay. So I spent a lot of time to, to explain to you how my brain works. Okay, so right after, so not right after that. So then we, then we, we hit the map. The people were very impressed. Oh, I thought, oh, I had to one more thing to say. I had, uh, I engineered that, but I had, I had there was a, um, a, a young lady. I wanted her to engineer because she was an engineer. I wanted her to engineer. I was sort of wanting just to be the director. I, you know, that's a weird thing. But a lot of times I don't, I just don't put myself out like that. I like behind the scenes. But I also want to train. So, so well, she came in to start the thing. She said, she's looking around. She's I'm trying to tell her what to do. Da, da. And she said, I can't, this can't be done. I can't do it. I said, I said okay, don't worry about it. Let her go. And I, that's how I had to engineer that that uh, day of absence. I had I want somebody else to engineer. You know, don't worry about it. Okay, so, so we did that, right? And then the next thing that we did uh, on there, on their radio program, then they had a radio program uh, like a Friday nights into Saturday mornings, like two two hours, two hours, 
Oh, no, three hours. Was it two hours? Three hours. Two or three hours. I, I think it was two hours. Um, but we'd alternate with uh, with another radio uh, program, Midnight Ravers, you know. Uh, Purpose did that so he have a week off and have a week break in between. I don't want to strain. I have logic for everything. Sometimes I do stuff and then the logic comes much after it happens, right? So they created a place. The, the next the next live audio drama, well, they, they did their regular programming, but the next live audio drama, which was also in 1986. No, I take that back. Okay, we did that in 1986. Then they had their radio program. So in the beginning of 1987 oh okay 1987 they did they, they did an original script uh, it's called The Case of the Ornate Vile it was like a, a thing with Sherlock Holmes they played Sir Sherlock Holmes and Watson it was a, it was an amazing uh, piece and we had live live piano live it, we had a point where we said well uh, what's this newfangled thing it's like to say a CD well let's make it she press a button and then we, we had the sister, she was on piano, she could play piano, and, and, and singing, it was, it was amazing, right? So we did that live, everything was done live. So that was the next uh, production that we did, uh, Case of Ornate Vile, that's an original, right? Then I went, and I was working on, um, since we, uh, oh, I'm sorry, all the time we was also, they was doing their regular radio program, so we do a whole, whole lot of, a whole lot of skits, you know, they would do skits, you know? So, and, and for that first year, I was the executive producer officially, but then the second year I was the executive producer in name only. I let Michael take over, so there was someone. See, can I say something? I have abandonment issues, right? I put something, it starts to happen, I see where it can go, I say, great, go with it. <laughs> and I don't, it's not that I disappear, but I sort of just take myself out just to be, just to see what, and then if you have some questions for me, you want to ask me some questions, how to, how to, improve it, do whatever it is, then I'm there, I'm there to, to, to answer you, let's put it that way, you know, okay, so, so we did that, then, then, uh, uh, then, um, then I, I, uh, uh, oh, for a case of ordinary vile, like I said, I was the uh, producer, director, engineer of the piece, and, uh, yeah, an engineer of the piece, they, 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 they were the writers, Cave Energy Collective was the writers, and then, then in 1988, the beginning of, oh, okay, this is 1980, this was a whole year, I guess, that's 87, 1988, now I know this to be what it is, is because I, um, I was working on this piece, I love Richard Wright, the, the author of Richard Wright, uh, he had a piece that, that I had done in, 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 in school, in graduate school, uh, that Avery Brooks had, had directed, or, or put, put some we did, called, um, uh, the Long Dream, yeah, every director. The Long Dream, I really liked it, and I wanted to do it as a radio play, so I adapted it to radio, and uh, and, and it was perfect. As, I almost used it as a graduation project for for Creative Unity Collective. There was four of them. The, the 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 book, uh, The Long Dream, was about the coming of age. These four young boys, young black boys in Mississippi, and and their trials and tribulations they came through, and if, you know, uh, like that. So there was uh, by that time, Creative Unity had. I whittled down to four people, and to four dudes, and so I I thought that this piece was the exact good piece for all four of them to have the roles, and and it was just a really good piece, and so I, I adapted it, and uh, and we did it right now. Now I have to stop here, not stop here, but 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 this is it's germane to the whole story. I know it turns out that like that. So uh, uh, uh so, so what I, so so what. What happened was, this is 1988, and this was the the, 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 the Democrat National Convention was coming on. And there was a lot of stuff happening in the station, a lot of upheaval, right? And uh, I had put in for a radio program, they wouldn't give it to me, because it's, cause the, the new program director that 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 hated me, well, hate is a strong word, but he, he had a strong dislike of my of me being me, let's put it that way, even though I had created, I had all these accolades, everybody knew who I was, and I and I was ingratiated to all the departments, I was a great engineer, and I was training people in radio, but he came, doesn't matter, but him and the station manager, they both, see I say you, okay I gotta say it, in fact let me tell you this way, here's how I got in trouble with them, we had a new program director, there was a, a new station manager, a new station manager that came in about 1980, yeah, maybe earlier in 80, 88, 
but uh, maybe eight, end of 87, no, no, 88, there was a new program director, a new uh, station manager came, right? But there was a lot of people we had, we had all kinds of stuff, but um, there, was, there was this, uh, I'm not going to name any name, but I have to say a little race though. There was this white guy that basically fired all the, all, a lot of the black women that were on station, one of them being Pepsi Charles, who was, who was a personal, I mean, you know, I, I was a student of hers at, at, at Livingston College, you know, where I graduated from. She was my English teacher, my great teacher. I love Pepsi, you know. I love Pepsi so much. Peace and blessing on her eternal soul. Um, anyway, uh, in fact, that, talk about, let's, let's tie this a little bit together. Pepsi had a program on, on WBA. That's when I first learned, knew really about, or had a VA, because it was a VA I was at the church on the east side in Manhattan. And one of a guest that she had while I was still her student, and she was doing the radio program, even though we was at New Jersey, was uh, County Cullen's widow. So I wanted to just go and just hang out in the program just to you know, be, went, be, be, well, County Cullen's widow. So she let me come up. So, that, so I, knew about the, I knew about the church. But by the time I came to BAI, they had lost the church. There's a whole thing about that. Somebody has to do a, a whole, there needs to be a whole volumes of, or there's, there's volumes of stories about WBAI. Oh, they're hot. They're, they're, let's call them, not even, they're noteworthy, outrageous, hilarious, uh, poignant, all those, all those words you're going to put into something like that. Anyway, so, so I knew about, anyway, so that, that's what happened. So, so when this guy, uh, uh, this, this guy got, the, the, that's, that program director had, um, the, 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 the new station manager, the program director, he got, I want to say he got canned. Let's put it that way. There. So this new station manager. Yeah, wait a minute. Should I mention his name? I'll mention his name. Just it's a matter of record. Uh, John Simon. He came in. I don't know where he came from. Who he was. I don't know how they picked him, but he was there. And so he, when he came in, he made this statement because of what he says. This is the next program director for the program. It was going to be a, a minority. His words exactly. Nine words. It's not even quote end quote minority it was like minority that's what he said i'm just there blah, blah, blah. so then there was this whole there was whatever they did and i'm not paying attention i'm 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 an engineer i'm a, you know I'm, I'm a producer i'm producing in the arts department because that's where i that's where i am the drama actually it was the drama literature department but it became the arts department because the whole budgetary thing they collapsed the arts the arts and the music department together so we were in one department okay so he said you know we're going to have a minority so then they announced that they were, they were having, we now uh, a, a program director was chosen. There's going to be a big meeting. They're going to introduce the program to the I remember this was, when, this was in the, the, the program. Then we had the main control room. Then I told you, then they had a, a big office space, which is the program director's office. And next to it, they had the meat locker. And then uh, uh, then on with the, uh, 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 what's called the meat locker, so edit B. And then on to, I guess it was the, my, my brain right here. Yeah, I guess that's where the engineering department was next day. Like, like, anyway, so we were all at the whole station way where I was, that was there. It was the middle of the day. We were all in this, crammed into the, uh, into the uh, what would be the, the program director's office. John Simon's there. And I clearly remember, I was by the door. I was just chilling, saying, what's going, who's going to be this minority hire? Quotas. <coughs> so he says, this is our new program director. This tells us it's John Skag, 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 John Scagliati. And I'm looking. Nobody says anything. Or maybe people were saying it. So I raised my hand. <laughs> oh, man. Don't be around when I raise my hand. If I, look, if I raise my hand, I, there's, there's several instances in my life where I raise my hand, stuff happens. So I raised my hand. Uh, excuse me, just to... I'm just, now I'm paraphrasing. I thought that uh, that we were supposed to have a minority for the next program director. And uh, he said, it's, I kid you not, he said, this is minority. He's homosexual. Well, maybe he said gay. Let's say, he's a homosexual. That was his minority pick. Well... I don't. I can't recall what happened after that. I, maybe it was the way I looked. Maybe because I'm not. You know, I I, I grew up in the grew up in the theater. I've been in the theater. I deal with dancers, so I'm not. Well, as I say, homophobic. I'm more accurate. It's like 
is homosexual white male actually a minority in the context that you was trying to that, that's in my brain maybe i did say something not 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 it was something like accurate right well man for the next few years and remember i'm, a, I'm a, an important engineer in the station you know and i got i'm, I'm executive producer for creative unity i mean i got I got things I do specials. Oh yeah, I was doing do with the drama literature department. I was doing uh, 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 film reviews. I, I, no, I, I stuff. You know, you can't just kick me out. You know, plus at, at BAI or at that kind of situation, the producers are, are want to have the, the credit, and uh, everybody knew what. I, I think even at that particular point, I did. I had a, I had a guest uh, radio program. Yeah, somewhere in there. Oh, that's right. I had a guest radio program because uh, the head of the drama, drama literature department. And uh, and Tom, who was uh, uh, Rick, Rick Harris, and and um, and 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 this guy that had a program on uh, uh, Tom Wellman, who had a program on do uh, called Weaponry, right? That he was going away for a while. Yeah, just that past, he was going away for a while, and they wanted me to substitute do a programming for the weeks that he was gone. And I'm going, I I don't know nothing about no weaponry. I was like, oh, you do whatever you want. Da, da, da. Just hold the spot, you know, just just your spot. Two hours, middle of the night, do what you want. That was my actually my first program on yeah this is before Skagliati and, and even John Tommy got there. So in the station I was well respected. Plus I sort of I'm very uniquely you know I still telephone volunteer, but I still oh I was still oh yeah I was doing emanations I forgot just a lot of stuff I was doing in the station, but I I was sort of ingratiated to all the little cabals you know what I mean I could go between any it was a cabal situation right at, at the station back then and even still now I suppose well station not saying now so everybody knew who I was and here's the thing so in I, I, I did a radio, I did a live radio program I'll leave that alone well it's called it's called live wire Tony Sloan on your radio and it was a wild program in the middle of the night it was wild I'm telling you it was a live wire program I had a ball it was like six weeks three weeks it was a limited thing anyway so then I had this idea and I want to do a thing called I want to do a radio program and I had a name and everything like that. I put my things and everything, but they blocked me. They do with the scaggly out in the sky because I could with it. Da, da, da. Okay, they wouldn't let me in. Or, so, in the meantime, uh, I'm still doing, I'm still working with creative, I'm doing, doing every other things at the station, and, um, and I'm still working with creative unity. That's when we did. Oh, hey, get back. Hey, phone. Hey, get back up, screen. Um, I need you. Okay, now I'll, I'll go a little faster. Oh, no, 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 this is still here. No, so not so. Just now we're talking about 19, uh, 1988. Now, with the significant thing that happened in 1988, uh, uh, right before, right, uh, yeah, I was up to talking about the long dream. The significant thing that happened in 1988 is that we had a Democrat national, national convention. One of the things I neglected to tell you also is that when working for emanations, I came quite, I did this, in, I did this when I my own, my own radio program. At, uh, at, 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 at Rutgers, I'm, I'm very good at editing, but there's a thing called vox pop where you go and you get people's, um, you, you 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 get comments from 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 the from the popular pop, vox pop popular voices. You get comments from the street, and then you take these comments and you edit them, edit them, edit edit them. Yeah, you edit you would edit them together, and and, and sort of make a story out of the thing. So you have a question, you know. Uh, do you think it's going to snow tomorrow? Everybody comes to there. And then you do the story about, you do the story, and you make, you make an arc, you make a little story out of it. It's like, take three minutes. And so you may have had six or seven or eight or ten comments, and you string them together so it makes a story, right? I was really good at that. I mean, when I say really good, because I was doing, I was doing it for emanations. Like, Bernard would have a topic, and I would go out, and, you know, you know the post office right there. You always have people, international people, all people all around, you know. And I would just and I could get all these pieces of tape and put them together and make a really nice story, you know, like that. But, oh, without my voice, that's the other thing. That's the other thing I like. I never, you know, I would do stuff that wouldn't include me, you know. It would just so it would just be their voices. Anyway, the point is, if you do stuff for long enough, you get quite good at. It. I was really good at vox pop, uh, putting stuff together. Well, they was going to the, 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 the Democrat National Convention down in Atlanta. Right now, what they do, what they would do this was so typical. Uh, 
the, the, you know, they would, I guess they would have accommodations down there. They would have whatever it is. There's going to, this, this was the Pacifica team. This is, and then this was Pacifica Radio in New York would, would send, they would send, they sent down the, the uh, arts director, which now became, as a sister named Giselle, Giselle's last name Mills, whatever. Giselle, uh, the, the, the Scagliati cat, uh, the news people, the news person, right? Nobody from, nobody from the arts department. Strangely enough, uh, uh, the the, the uh, not the station manager, but the the program, the program, yeah, the program director. So they went down. Then all the others, all the other four stations, you know, you have KPF, KPF, KPA, K, KPFA in Berkeley or whatever, the Sam's Berkeley. You have KPFK in, in Los Angeles. You had, uh, um, uh, with the, the 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 station in Houston that got bombed a few times, um, whatever that for. Whoever, whatever they were, uh, uh, I don't remember the name. So then you had DC, you had WPFW, then you had BA. Those are the five five main stations, and those those miss, I guess you call them senior staff would go and be you know and, do, and, and, uh, and they would bring the the, the I think eh? they would bring uh, the news people you know from those states, the big time news because they were going to be this national program they were going to do. Well, I'm going like Atlanta. I had a friend in Atlanta. Uh, John Harris Jr. We we built we built a theater in New York together, you know. So I'm going like, let me go visit John. <laughs> so I got my my sister had a uh, well, I had the pair. She had a uh, an Audi at the time. Up there. Anyway, so I borrowed my sister's car. And I drove on down to Atlanta. That was a great trip. I visit JB on the JB. Remember JB uh, the Saturday? So I visited him on the way like that. And then, hey, Tanani, how you doing, man? I got your thing. I I saw you did. But, but, I'm going through my whole history of audio drama. Oh, Talani knows audio drama. She's from longer. <clears throat> we're, we're doing before I before I got before I got to South Africa, Talani. So this doesn't include all the stuff that is in South Africa. Don't worry about it. This is the beginnings of it. <clears throat> oh, so you know, back hey, you remember Cape Coast? Come on, you still got one of these shirts? Talani knows about this. See Cape Coast right there? Okay, anyway, back to the point. So uh so I drive I drive down there, they don't know I'm coming. So I drive down there, I show up. Hey, I'm here to help. <laughs> uh, no, you have to pay me. I'll, I'll help. What, what, and, and, and the rest of the staff, see, see, scaggly eye, those people, well, Giselle wasn't saying anything. Of course, the, the news people, oh, Robert Knight was there uh, uh, from the news department. They weren't saying, they didn't say nothing. They tried to stay out of it. They said, well, yeah, well, what can you do? I said, oh, I can do a little rock for you. Right? And so they said, okay, so just to get rid of it. So, yeah, I, no, I got my own tape recorder. I said, okay, you, you go out and get rock You know, just get me away from them, right? I went out the first day I got because the way my technique is they got really oh 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 that's kind of interesting okay okay oh, they, they liked it right remember it's a four day whatever then the second day uh, there was a uh, one a uh, sister was running anyway the way I cut it together she was about to curse and I cut it to something else that was so significant they were like whoa then they started really painting the box pop that I was doing was it's really great. Remember, this is only two minutes, three minutes at the most that, that they would put on, on on their nightly broadcast or whatever. Happened. But they were, they were like outstanding, right? Can I say this? No, I won't say this right now. Anyway, I, that's, that's why. Let me put it this way. Whatever you do, I'm saying you, but whatever I did, you do it to such a maximum that it's like, it's noteworthy. Let me put it that way. No matter what you do in your life, well, Martin Luther King said, I don't really like Pope Martin Luther King. If you're going to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper that is possible. Look, in South Africa, at one of these petrol stations, right? A guy was one, I remember, mean, it's only one. It was there, oh no, it was not, not your neck of the woods tonight. This is by Felipe. This guy, this petrol guy was so good. I'm going like, he can get a job any place, you know? Because you just, you just do your thing so, it's like, you do your thing so intensely and so good. It's so noteworthy that, well, you're noteworthy. Anyway, uh, then so they were really impressed with that, right? Then we had a third one, right? And then I think the, the last night, this is where it gets, I mean, then the last night, uh, I went and got some Vosma. Then I, I got one guy, and, and he was he had a Spanish accent, so I, I got it for him. Then I came back to him. I said, say, what you just gave to me, can you say it in Spanish, right? So he said it in Spanish. 
So I edited the thing together. Oh, this is the last night. This this was Dukakis. Was was Dukakis was the guy. He was going to give his speech that night. Right. I said, "Can you send a?" So I edit. So I edit, and I edit his comment in. Just just in the it makes it, you, you would understand what he was saying because of the comments that went went you know that went before. And, but there was no translation. It was just him in Spanish. Very very short. Right. But I was leaving that night. I had to get back for some reason or another. And I was leaving that night. And Robert Knight was leaving too. So we both. So I was I, I took Robert Knight back because he was he he was visiting his folks in, in North Carolina. So North Carolina's on the way from back from Georgia, right? So I would drop him off and I would keep on going to New York. <clears throat> well, so I it's, like I said, you know, my work is my work. I don't I don't really work in the news department. I'm an arts. I'm an arts. You know, I do what I do, and and you know, nobody questions what I do. You know, because that's the way it is, right? So we're driving back, listening to the broadcast, and so. The, the force comes on with, uh, with Pacifica with, with the news, right? Before before the caucus speech comes on. And we're listening. And I'm going like, hey, Robert, something wrong. What, what, what's wrong? They cut my, they cut my, my Vox Pop. I had a guy in there speaking Spanish. They cut it out. They they, they cut around it. They took, they literally took it out like that. I'm arguing with him, not arguing. I'm talking about in the car like that. I said, well, Robert's this person. Who knows? I don't know what he's going through. He's I'm livid. I'm li what, what is? I'm infuriated. I'm a whatever. Whatever it is you get when you blow your top with the cartoons and that that that. Let's say something. I'm an emotional guy. I know black men not supposed to be emotional. Whatever it is, don't go off the frying handle. Don't jump to conclusion. But that's the way I don't get no heart attacks because I let it all out. Oh, oh, oh. What? I was really mad. But then, here's what happened. The caucus gets up there, and unbeknownst to anybody, nobody knew what's going on, he delivers a whole paragraph of his acceptance speech in Spanish. Think about this. Me, who's in tune to the universe, because that's the way I is. No, 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 I'm only kidding. I basically foretold what was going to happen. We, we, they could have had a Spanish... Thing in there before the Spanish, it would have been a. You, you understand? I mean, are you all following me on this? Look, look me and the Great Spirit are like this, right? We like this, two peas in a pod. You can't even tell us apart. Me and the Great Spirit, right? I'm hooked up, right? That's what I'm telling you. I'm, 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 my, my life passed for seven, right? <laughs> my life passed for seven. That's a spiritual number. I'm a spiritual. Yeah, I might be emotional, but I'm also spiritual, and I'm also intellectual. And I, I'm, I used to, I guess I still am physical. I used to be really physical. <laughs> um, so, oh, oh. I got on the phone the next day because there was a guy that was in charge of, of this whole Pacifica thing, you know. And, you know, I knew the, I knew other people in Pacifica. And I'm going like, <laughs> oh, no. First I talked to the, 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 the guy that was, uh, what's his name, big time Pacifica person out of, out of, out of, uh, out of uh, uh, KPFA at the time. I mean, he was the voice of Pacifica, if you will. And I'm arguing with him on the phone. You know, from New York, I said, "Hey, look, Anthony, I had nothing to do with it. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a thing. They, I didn't make that decision. So we finally figure out who made that decision. He wouldn't really confront with me. Okay. Now you say you took me a long time to say, well, this is going to be very important to the scheme of things, right? So you know, it's already done. What could I do? But I, and, and I was just like, I, there's no way. This is why I don't do news, because I can't have no editor." Because the editor don't know more than I do. Well, at least in radio. You know, the editor don't know, is not hooked up in the spiritual realm like I am. It is not hooked up in the skills realm like I am. The editor is not on down the line. Okay? Or like what, or like what I say, when I left, when I, when I left New York, well, uh, well, when I left, when I started traveling in 2003, yeah. Uh, when I started traveling, when I was going, going to Africa, one of the last broken, I still did No More Radio all throughout, and then I was doing No More Radio from PFW, anyway, from Studios PFW. But I said, I read this statement, I said, I'm the baddest audio dramatist on the planet. Nobody can beat me. Nobody. Bring it, no, there's nobody better than I am. This is what I said back in, 19, in 2003, right? Let me say so. I be messing with people all the time. Now, 
in my whatever, I know that you on the planet, there's other people that's really good. I mean, there's, there's at least there's other people, right? I say it because I, I can say it, and I just first I want the other people to come out of the come out. And we let's have a let's let's have an audio drama off. That would be my. I would love to have an audio drama off. Give, give everybody the same the same budget, whatever. In fact, I do stuff without budget. Give the same you know same cast, same not cast, but the same amount of thing. But then, then you know, and, and let's have some sort of contest. You know, I come with nothing up my say nothing up my sleeves. I used to do it. Somebody used to, I used to come to the workshop, like I said, no, no, I say, I can do it, you can do it, right? I take any and all challenges in audio drama. I dare you <laughs> to come to my world, my arena, my coliseum, and try to, to, get, to dethrone the king? The king? The audio drama king? That's who I is. I is the king. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm taking a long time because I'm having so much fun right now. Okay. So the reason why I went through all that stuff to tell you about that is because on the way back, uh, uh, I had been working on, I've been working on the, the, the long dream. And I had finished it. I, no, I got back and I did the finish it, touched it on it. And so I pulled the group together. We was going to have, um, and I cast, I cast everybody pretty much. And, uh, and Bernard Bernard White, who I did, who, who I did, who was assistant to in Emanations, who was one of the best voices in radio. Right? I said, as I was, uh, oh, oh, I know, uh, Bernard was going to upstate New York. I had just come back from the, uh, and I, and I just needed this last, this last little thing that I was doing with with, with the play. And, but he had this place in upstate New York. He spent the weekend there. He said, why don't you come up? I said, so yeah, we hang out, hang out there. And as I was finishing up the thing. I said, Bernard, I got a role for you. I got a part for you. He said, yeah. I said, yeah, I got a part for you. I, I had the script. And everything. I said, I want you to do this part as a part of a preacher, right? Because uh, there's a fire in the play. Anyway, there's a, pre there's a funeral. And the preacher is, is, is the, the preacher. It's a, one, it's a, it's a cameo. It's just one, one little part. So I show him the script. I take the script. You know, he wants to take the script. I give him the whole script. And uh, he says, okay, I'll check it out, you know. So I think maybe even the next day we had a little run through. I don't have rehearsal. We had a run through with all the cast like that, and Bernard's there reading, reading the thing like that. And I clearly remember Yusef. <laughs> and you remember Yusef and, and, and Michael and Daryl and Ronnie Black. They all like that's they're, they're my core group for audio drama. And so you, I remember Yusef looking and saying, "Because Bernard, the way Bernard was reading, pretty flat, whatever it is." And I can hear you say, this is not going to work, you know, because we had to do live. This is a live audio job. It's going to be a big thing. It's going to be like three hours, I think. It's going to be a long thing. And you can see, see Yusuf's sketch, Yusuf's skepticism <laughs> of how Bernard was going to handle this. So, sure enough, to the next time, we were ready to hit, right? Oh, no, the, 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 that night, before the next day, Bernard calls me up. He says, Anthony. I said, yeah. He says, I got it. I said, okay. I don't question nobody. Look, for me, when I cast you, when we do the piece, we do the piece. If you if you if you hit, you hit. If you don't, there's nothing we could do about it. You know what I mean? That's just the adrenaline hits. And if you, you miss your you're on book anyway. If you miss your line, if whatever it is, hey, don't look at me. I did my job. I'm I'm, I'm directing. I'm engineering now. I'm I'm not. You know, I'm engineering now. You you mess up. There's nothing I can do. You mess your lineup. That was your. That was on you, right? So when Bernard said that, I got, I got said, oh, okay, you know. So we hit do the play. Now remember, we haven't we we had a we had a, a read through if you want to call it a read through. We had just just to get us some, some whatever. So nobody knew what was going to happen. We get to this part in the play where there's this preacher because this is funeral, and Bernard does. If you know anything about black culture or uh, American African culture or whatever you want to you know. Black people in the United States culture, United States and North American culture, in the wilderness of the North American culture of the United States, then you will know what a, a singing preacher is. Bernard did this singing preacher. This is a funeral scene. This thing was so, I can feel it now, man. It was so riveting. And I think, no, this is not, I don't know if Smooth had come yet. 
I don't think Jay Smooth had come yet. But whoever was, I think, oh no, I was I was engineering. And Bernard had the place so charged. And then we had to go to this next scene was in the meat locker. With, with Michael Raymond was in the meat locker. But the, the, the people were so charged. <laughs> I said, oh goodness, we got to do something. I forgot who was my assistant. Maybe, maybe Daryl was the assistant. I said, Daryl, take over. And I ran around to the thing. And I basically started to hum the people down. Hum, hum them out of, of this morning. You know what I mean? And, and the funny way there, I signaled to Daryl to go over to the meat locker so Mike could, take, could cut these mics and go over to the other thing. It was amazing. I'm telling you, it was amazing. <laughs> In fact, it, but it did have its humor because, oh yeah, we had the binaural mic because that Joe Masseri came. People would come all the time to try to join in what I was doing because we have fun, you know. You want to hang out with the boy, you know. You want to hang out with the brother because it's big fun. You ever see a boy this binaural microphone? It's like a head of a, a like a dummy head, by two microphones and like an ear thing. So he was part of the people in the crowd, and at the very end, you can hear him say, "You can say." Amen, which is amen like a like a like an Italian white boy. I, I can't explain it to you, but it, it was hilarious. To me it was hilarious. Maybe well, anyway. That's just a little story. Sorry about that. So that ends, okay? So then I do uh just eighty nine. Oh, I, then what happened? Uh then I, I do we do the thing the Eve of Christmas Eve, which is an original by uh creating by oh uh, by Creative Unity, even it's original by Creative Unity. Uh, I was a producer, director, facilitator, I don't know what that means, engineer, right? But that same year, this 1989, uh, we, I did a thing, Three by Do, short story by Henry Dumas. I produced, directed, adapted, and engineered that. Again, all these things, Creative Unity was my core group. We have other people come in and do a farce like that. Um, and then I did, uh, then, how did this go? How did this go? Yes, I know how it went. 1989, I think in 1990, um, I have here uh, Glorious Monster of the Hall, Scenes from Larry Neal's Glorious Novel. I produced the record adapter because that was Larry Neal's piece. That was in 1990, but also in that same year, right, just a second, I can put my nose. In that same year, uh, there was a, 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 a a conference, a radio conference, right? And so I was involved with that radio conference, but there was this guy out of uh, KPFA, uh, uh, Pacifica up there, and the thing, uh, famous uh, audio drama kind of person. This is the first time I was, uh, uh, see, I, I'm self-taught in audio drama. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to any conferences. Nobody taught me how to do it. So, but I had my tapes from, uh, I had a tape from, uh, for the stuff that I had done, including, uh, including The Long Dream. But that's the other thing that I wanted to present it. But I, but because I was involved with this guy, uh, Norman, Norman Gile, uh, big big time guy, uh, I was part. Of, you know, we I was part of his play, that his presentation that he was doing. So I didn't have time to, to do a lot of other stuff in the conference. And so at the end of the conference, the, the last night where people you sit sort of partying and whatever have you, and uh, I said, oh man, I didn't have a chance to show up to do a play. But there was a little list, listening session upstairs, so. Uh, so he said, "Well, let's hear it now." So I, I put, I put, I think it was, I think it was Long Dream on, or maybe it was whatever it was. And uh, one of the guys there, big time, get, this is just, this, this is a, a conference with all the uh, uh, community radio people, you know, especially the arts kind of people. They're all around. And so when he heard, when when one of the was this, uh, uh, Tom, what's Tom? Uh, something Tom. He's he's a big time audio drama guy. Anyway, so he heard, he heard that. And he said, they all listen. So, oh, that's really good, right? I'm gonna blow my nose for one second. Cause I got, we're sitting in here, and this is a this is an old RDP, original RDP Africanas thing where they it's like uh well sort of moldy. Hold on a second. I've been talking for a long time. Okay. So he said, "Oh, it's too bad." So what's the place? I said, "That's really good, but you know, the uh, the uh, National Endowment for the Arts they give out, you know, grants, and one of the grants get is for post production. You could take this and put it into post production." I said, "Really?" 
So he said, yeah, he said, but maybe this was on the weekend. He said, I think the deadline is Tuesday or something like that. Well, this was in, we were in the Midwest someplace. I forget where we was, Minnesota, not Minnesota, someplace in the Midwest. So when I got back to New York that night, I, or I forgot to tell you, in eighth grade, home, my homeroom was typing, so I could, you know. Anyway, the point is, I whipped this proposal out, put the thing, submitted it in time, right? And um, to make this long story a tiny bit longer, so it has to, the way they do it, you know, everybody from all over the country, you have these proposals come in with the da da da. But the people that judge it, this is really good, are people in radio. You know, you're not judged by somebody that don't know nothing about radio. Just saying, I'm sorry, the people that would just say the audio drama people, or all people in audio drama, let's put it that way. It wasn't like a news person judging the audio drama thing or a, or, 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 or a station manager judging the audio. It's like you had the, you, the, the each committee, how the whole, oh, you have an overall thing, but each, whatever they would, uh, uh, you, you were being judged by other people in audio drama, let's put it that way. Well, as we go down to the bottom here, when it goes to awards, grants and awards. Oh, you can't see what I'm turning up. Uh, in 1988, I got I got the New York State Council of the Arts Award. Uh, but then in 1989, yeah, that must have been 1989. 1989, that's when, that's when we had that, that thing, yeah. I got the National Endowment for the Arts to do that postcard. Death out of that for... For the long dream, I got I got the highest award you can get to, to an individual. It was like something like ten thousand dollars. A lot of money back then. For that for that thing, so I took that money. <laughs> See, I'm not a money person. I took that money to 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 hire some to do another thing. So that next year, that now we go now we go back up to 1990. Oh, was, I also got 1991. I got the Paul Robeson Fund Award. That's out of New York. That was. Hey, and you have Paul Robeson on it. I, I, I feel honored, right? Uh, I got the National Federation of Community Broadcasters. Oh, that was an award. But the other thing, I got funds for that. But the, the next year, so 1989, I got National Endowment for the Arts. I won that. Then in 1990, I put in again for for the play, for the next play. Let me go. Now, let me go back up. Because remember... I had now, I had uh, done Larry Neal's, right? So the next play that was, this is, so in 1990, I got that award. 19, the, the, begin, the, end of, the beginning of 1991, that's when I, put, I, I, I produced uh, my huge piece. The, uh, the, uh, it's called uh, well, Richard Rice, The Lord Today, and The Outsider. It's called The Outsider. And it was like two books of Richard Wright. I adapted that, and I, that, I took that's what I, I took the money from for all that, and I hired all the actors and stuff like that, and all the everything musicians and everything like that. So it was like a huge play. It was like eight. Well, I'm gonna say I forget what it was. It's like eight and a half hours live audio drama, no commercial breaks. That's why I say you can't beat me. Think about it: eight and a half hours of radio drama, no commercial breaks. I'll let that register, right? Okay. So, so that's uh, so that's what I did with that. So for two years in a row, I got the two highest thing for national endowment for arts for the radio for the, for a, 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 an individual could get right. Um, now the reason why I, here's what I think happened. Like I said, this, these things are being judged by people in radio, right? I think the guy that did me wrong. I I have no proof. But he's down. He was down in, out of D.C. anyway. I think that the guy who did me wrong, you know, was took my, to, uh, uh, took out that that the, the Spanish part of the of the Vox Pop that I did for the for the Democrat Nat National Convention broadcast that we did in 1988 when Dukakis Dukakis did his whole uh, thing in Spanish. I think what they did, what he did, he sort of like, oh, I owe this, I, I owe this man a favor. So I think he maybe pushed to 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 do that. I'm not sure. I can't prove it. But it was two years in a row, so maybe, I don't know. Or, or I know what you're on there radar. But then, I never put in reports afterwards, because I, I have to understand, this other weird thing with me, I'm not really into awards. <laughs> and I'm not really into funding either. I know you sound so understand that. When I did get to, to, to South Africa, I did, I did 
What's another weird thing? Not a weird thing, but I did get the, in, in South Africa. You know, the high, the, the, the most difficult uh, grant or whatever funding to get is to fund it from the lottery fund. Well, I got that. <laughs> That's how I got this T-shirt. That's right. That's we we use this. This is t This is what this is. T-shirt was made from from the money I got from that. With the whole cast got that with that. Oh, my point is. I don't know what my point is. Okay, so I did that, and then as we as we go on, let me turn glasses like I say. And so after after that, which what was that? Oh, the long the long thing. I think I do uh, even Christmas Eve. Roy's monster Bella Horn. Oh, the big rich right piece. Then I went off from there. Uh, remember these are all things that I did as, as in my department, art director, art, art director, right? Then we did this uh, thing. Um, uh, I guess. Director, staff writer for oh that we did a thing called Operation 1991. We did a thing called Operation Welcome Home. That was before we did that. I did something else. Save Unity did something with this guy that they didn't really like. Anyway, uh, Operation Welcome Home. That's significant because this was oh 1981. Okay, right after I did or, or as I was doing. Um, uh, the outsider, uh, I became arts director in 1991. Then I had to give up. Tell my radio, a uh, bunch of other things happened, right? Because I was running the arts department. So, but the last thing that we really did before I became officially, uh, well, somewhere in there, uh, we did the thing, Operation World Home. This is when the, the first Iraq war, you know, uh, the, 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 the big Bush guy, you know, the George H. H. whoever, Bush. Uh, because uh, 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 what happened? Uh, oh, he wanted to divert attention from his SNL scandal from his boy, the Keating, the Keating boy, and all the rest of them. They had the thing down in Texas. He wanted to divert attention there, so they started the the, the 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 Iraq War. You know, to divert attention so that people would get you know wouldn't pay attention to the to the scandal that was going on in Texas with with his boy, right? So, 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 so at the end of that, on the head operation, we called the Creative Unity, uh, yeah, by then, by then Smooth was with us. So we did Creative Unity, we, we did this thing called Operation Welcome Home. And uh, that piece was really interesting because it was the first hip hop opera. Yes, we did. You didn't know that? You learn something new every day, don't you? We had elements of hip hop. It really was a, 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 a hip. How do you want to say it's a rap opera, hip hop opera? Right? But we also had had things like that. I had like uh, Sophia Bendelli and and James Small was in it. They they were like Orishas on the thing. We had the, we had we, we was done done it in, in hip hop. We had uh, 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 Bruce, uh, 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 Bruce Mack and a PBR Street Gang was the was was the was the was the was the, uh, was the, music, was the music thing. We, it was an amazing production. It was done at the New York and it was done at the New York Post Cafe live. What can I tell you? I like doing things that you don't normally, you know, do. You see what I'm saying? So, so that was done. But then I became arts director. Then now, if you notice that all these things that I did up until that point were basically, let's call it black theme themes around like blackness. Let's put it that way. But I became arts director, and you have to understand, even when I was writing plays, I would write plays for the space. And when I do things, I, I look at what's going on. I look at, uh, as a stage manager, what you do is you look at things that, uh, uh, w w w what you got to work with, you know? So when I became an arts director, now, now I, I'm working with this, uh, uh, let's call it, I guess these days, you call it a multicultural station, a multi-everything a multi -everything station. So then, then my audio dramas had to, that had to, but... I changed it to accommodate. What I did was I started using the audio drama as a tool to bring the station together. Because as a person that went through all the little cabals, I knew how how stratified the station was. So I wanted to have a, a form, a way that you can, you know, have di different departments know each other and talk to each other. So I used audio drama to do that. Right. And interestingly enough, the first the first one that we did, of course, it's a political station too. We did. Um, we did George Orwell's Animal Farm, but that I produced and engineered that. Uh, who, who, I don't know who, I forgot who adapted it. Maybe we just did, somebody else adapted it. And uh, 
I engineered. I must. I must. Maybe I didn't direct it too. I must have directed it. I'm trying to remember. Or maybe by that time, had had Andrea come uh, into the station. I don't think I, I would have said directed if I didn't direct it. Anyway, um, the cast was hilarious, but it was at the suggestion of Samori Marksman that that be the piece that it, that I do. Right. So we did it. It was hilarious. It was a because boxer was this. Guy. It was it was a great production. In fact, I still remember. Uh, no, Samori Marks was at the stable. He wasn't. He he didn't became. He didn't become a program director again because uh, uh, Andrew Phillips was in the play. He was the pro, he was a program director at the time, but I had him as program the program director. I we cast him too. Him and Delphine, uh, Delphine Blue, they sang the song in the beginning of the piece. It was so beautiful. Uh, yeah, I adapted it, so I must have put it. Somehow, put this. It was a song. So beautiful. It was a great little production, right? Or oh, big production. So I did that, and then went from there. Where, where did I go from there? And now remember, now uh, so I did Animal Farm. The next thing I did, yeah, Andrea must have been around by then, because we did uh, uh, Lewis Carroll's Alice, Alice, uh, uh, the Alice stories. It's like Alice in uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. We called it the Alice story. I was producer, co-adapter, and engineer for that one. Uh, then let me take a look I can see. Then the next piece I did was uh, see. I love Mark Twain, so I went in this Riverboat series. They have a thing called Putting Head Wilson. You know, you, you people know they had um, what, what I can't name or uh, his, his Mississippi things like um, uh, Tom Sawyer was one, Huckleberry Finn was another. There's another one. Oh, yeah, Putting Head Wilson was it one and. Um, there's another one. It's a four in this Riverboat series. Uh, well, the, the notable thing about putting Head Wilson is the first time they use uh, they use uh, fingerprints. You, you, they, they, well, the French have invented fingerprints, whatever, but the fingerprints were used. Anyway, it was a great, great production. Now, I really love that, that book. If, in fact, if I had to adapt, just repeat something, no, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I'd pick something else by Mark Twain. You know, stuff. So I did that. Then. This is all the same year. This is all 1992. See, I was, I was a busy little chappy in 1992, but I was mostly engineer. But then we did Norton Justice. Um, oh, yeah, that's, only, that's right. But Norton Justice, uh, was the Phantom Tobo, I was a producer, co adapter, and engineer. So I worked on a script for that. Uh, but had, I mean, um, the Phantom Tobo was hilarious. It was amazing. We did it at the Public Theater, at the Ansbacher Theater. And I mean, I still remember Mark, this guy, Mark Mood, did, uh, did our jazz program. He, I, I, encourage everybody, I encourage everybody to have fun and to create their own characters. And have, be, since we was doing it in the public theater, to have their own costumes and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I remember Charlie Finch had a, got a, he played the dog, man, and he got the, the little dog hat. And he, he was, oh, everybody had a ball. Man. And what's name had a big, uh, he was a mathematician in, in Phantom Tobo. He got this big, one of those magician's hat. It was big. I was talking to this. Anyway, everybody just had a, had a ball, okay. So we had we did that. At the same time, I was traveling. I had been I had been uh, uh, the international you know uh, AMOC, the uh, Association of Community Broadcast Association, yeah, Association Worldwide. So the community practice of community broadcast from all the world. But I had I had done a piece that's not listed here because it's not a station one. That was I had done a piece. At the, at the, this night, uh, had a done a piece in, in Mexico, Mexico City, uh, for the for the conference that we had. Actually, the first actually live audio drama I did that was outside the country was in Belize, believe, believe it or not, Belize City. There's a little radio station there, and we did a little did a little thing there. I don't, I don't list that. Well, then again, I, well, anyway. So, anyway, so uh, 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 that was done, and I, I went. They invited me down afterwards. After that, after we did that big thing, they invited me down. Uh, to Mexico, and uh, I took uh, at that time. Uh, at that time, Jake was hanging out, you know, because well, he's he was hanging out since uh, since uh, the outsider, I guess, doing these big these big productions, and uh, and we had a great time down there. And we, in fact, that was a groundbreaking thing because it was the first time they dealt with AIDS down in, in community radio in Mexico. See, I'm such a groundbreaker. Uh, 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 so 
so so that was a, that was a great that was a great production. We did that live like that. Uh, came back the next year. Oh, that's Pinocchio. Oh, we did Pinocchio B.I. I mean, at, at the at the at, at public day. Well, at B.I. Oh, B.I. That was hilarious too. That was amazing. We had, in fact, at that time Malcolm this guy was with us, and he he, he was music, well, he recruited uh, the we had an orchestra from the Julia School. Man, it was it was something. Right. Uh, so that was that was a great production too. Uh, and that's that's then later on and what did I do? I adapted, directed. I directed that one. Produced, directed, and adapted. I produced, directed that the Pinocchio one. Then then we did. Uh, oh, we did Palm Wine Drinker. I had to do this. Amos Totola, a uh, Palm Wine Drinker, um, and I, I produced, directed, and adapted that produced at the Public Theater too. Palm Wine Drinker is, a, is an African play. So technically, well, I had an all black cast of it. So, but well, don't worry about it. But I did that. At the, pub, at the public theater, and then we did an original. Uh, I don't think we did. I think we did this at the station. That would create unity. But okay, Unity is all my. It was in all my stuff anyway. But uh, here we did called as original called Brother Minister. That was producer, director, and staff writer, and engineer for that Brother Minister. That's uh, thing with uh, Brother Minister, like I said. So that was like uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Uh, then, then I was traveling. Then I started to travel. So the next one I did out of the country was uh, The Coming Plague. It was the original thing that's done in Dark House Senegal. Uh, that was that, that that was amazing too. But that was the amazing thing about that. When we were doing it, I had a lot of people from uh, from, from uh, uh, oh Gambia, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> from Gambia was in the play. But at the time we were doing it, same when we were supposed to hit, that's when they had the the, the, the guys went and and, and, uh, and, and basically uh, uh, stormed his radio station, the guy that was in the play, and announced that the Gambia is now, well, there was a coup. <coughs> That's what happened. So much cast, but we still did the piece. They, they had to go. They all went home to Gambia. Anyway, that was George. George. I, uh, when it was happening, George gave me a very good gift of uh, some clothing I still have. Anyway. So that happened, and then the last one, the last big one before I really left the states, uh, yeah, well, well, this, left, left, left my. The oldest time I was, I was still arts director. All this time from ninety one to to, to well, ninety five to ninety six, I was really. Um, it's not included here the piece that I did up in Montreal. I don't know what's not listed, but it's not listed. That was a huge piece. Woo! That was an amazing piece, man. International. Mm. Anyway, so the last thing I did was I did the whole full. Remember I told you I did I did scenes from from uh, from Glorious Monster Bella Horn, Larry. But here I did the whole play. You know, he went to uh, Evelyn Neal, the, 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 uh, his widow, to get permission to do it. And he went to uh, approach uh, what's his name, Ron Carter, who did the music for the original thing. Say, hey, can we? Uh, say, sure. Uh, you know, so we did that. That's when I. That's ninety six. Uh, that's when I left VAI. And, uh, yeah, that's when I left VAI. So that's my that's my history of uh, audio drama at uh, WBAI or, or or around that time. When are you? Okay, around that time. Uh, uh, all the stuff I did there. And now I bring up to say because remember this is audio drama that I know it took way too long, but I had to get this all down because I probably won't say it again. I'll have to go to South Africa again, but I've done South Africa or around since then. But right now, um, we in fact I'll talk, I'll talk about this next week. But since I went took so long with this, but there's a group here that they just won. I, I mentioned already they just won an award uh, for audio drama, you know, my style and number and. Uh, and so, so audio drama lives. I live, it lives. When I go, it's still gonna live because, because uh, I got, I got audio drama children all over the planet, right? I, even I was just in India, in fact, it's online. I, I, I guided them a little thing how to do audio drama. So wherever I go, that's what I do now, right? I no longer do my own pieces. That's not to say it won't, but uh, it's just that, you know, you get to, you know, 
How are you going to beat eight and a half hours live audio drama? Come on, how are you going to beat that? And all the memories I have with something like Phantom Toll Booth or Brother Minister or whatever or Operation Welcome Home, you know, the first audio. You know, ah, just, I'm a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Only talking about the brother. Well, uh, anyway, so that's it. Sorry to take so long. Actually, I'm not saying, hey, Ian, you, I was I gave my whole history of audio drama and how I got all this I got uh, uh, in the states, not not here in in, in the, uh, not here in South Africa, but in the states. The whole history, of all the things, and how I really got funded because somebody had done me wrong, uh, some news department done me wrong, and then and then uh, this and that to that. And I got the money to do that, and how I don't really accept money for do what I do, but I do it. And started traveling. I, but I just got up to when I left the States right now. So I haven't done anything for the stuff that, at least not the one that, the, the, what the, the, I do this thing called Conclave. Well, I used to do this well, thing called Conclave. Ian, that, that's, that's how me and Ian, well, let me put it this way. If you do an audio drama, or if you come and witness an audio drama, then we friends for life. That's how me, me well, James, James Small used to be on my radio program all the time. But when he did, when he did that, when he did that thing, for Operation Welcome Home, man, James, always. That's what it is. Okay. Got to go, got to go, got to go. Took too long. Sorry. I don't apologize. Did I say I'm sorry I don't apologize? It makes sense to me. Audio drama will make sense to you. Talk to you all later. Bye.